If rap look, bring harp is not null. Funk rap this. Drowsy. This is the first in a series of videos where we talk about what's next for Cursorless. So as you can see here, I wrote up a document describing what is the big picture for Cursorless. Where are we going? As well as a detailed roadmap of how do we get there. Um, so my focus today is not going to be on this entire big picture. Um, I'm going to focus on a specific aspect of it. Um, so I'm going to focus on snippets. Um, so if you take a look um, at the roadmap here, you can see we have these different projects. And one of these projects is around new modes of interaction, right? So it's how can we use voice um, and the powers around um, structural editing that Cursorless has today to build out something that's much more powerful and enables you to interact with your code in new ways. Um, so a big component of how we get there is snippets. Snippets allow you to construct things, right? Cursorless today is very powerful in terms of destructing things. It knows exactly how your program is structured when it looks at it so it can refactor it. But it's not very powerful at destructing and then constructing, right? I want to convert a switch statement to an if statement. Um, I want to construct some particular structure on the fly. Um, that is the direction that I think snippets um, empower us to go. Um, so in these, um, so this is one of these projects, new modes of interaction. There's a few others, um, check them out, uh, give me feedback. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So you can see here that these projects are arranged by roughly the order in which we're going to get to these things. And if you want to zoom in even more, you can look at the milestones. I'll leave links to all these things in the description below. Um, but you can see the milestones here. The one that is uh, the nearest term, 0.26, uh, snippet insertion support. Um, so, uh, th so let's start there, okay? Right. So the goal today will be, where are we today? What can you already do? What is coming in the very new future, um, like already exists on, on experimental branches in Cursorless. And then what is the bigger picture long term around snippets? Okay, so let's start off with what you can do today. Coder. Drowse. Okay, uh, the thing you can do today with snippets is wrap. Okay, so let's say I want to take this second statement, um, this declaration, and I want to wrap it in an if statement. If wrap look. Drowse. So I basically have taken a snippet and I, ba and I use it to wrap something uh, in curs with cursorless, right? Notice I'm left in the condition block uh, branch, of, in the condition there. So I can very easily chain. Um, again, a major goal of cursorless, fluent chaining so that you don't have to speak in choppy short commands. So let's take a look at that. Let's say I want to put in that condition all in one step, a check if hello, the variable is null. Nope. So. If wrap look, bring harp is not null. Drowse. So you can see um, all in one voice command, I was able to define that. So um, what you can also do today is define custom snippets. So the if statement, try catch, um, those are built in. Um, and in addition, I have a bunch of my own personal snippets. Um, I can put a link there in case people want to steal those, but um, users can define them. So I have one personally, which allows you to define a function or wrap something in a function. So let's take a look at that. Funk wrap this. Drowse. And you can see it took that um, if statement, wrapped it in a function, left my cursor there to define the name. Okay. Um, that's what exists today in Cursorless. Um, uh, I think it's fairly useful already um, and really leverages some of the powers of Cursorless. So that's why we started there. Um, but um, what you can't do today, uh, notably, is insert a snippet from scratch, right? Um, I can wrap something in a snippet, but if I want to code in a snippet-based manner, right, where I'm building snippets and basically constructing these structures, each of which have these holes where I can fill in text um, and, and other elements of the program, that you can't do today. However, um, it actually already exists on an experimental branch, um, which I've been using for a little while. Um, so, um, so this is going to be coming soon because it works pretty well. Um, so let me give you a quick demo of that, right? And that'll be, you know, where is the very, ne the very next step for cursorless in terms of snippets? Is a snippet insertion? Okay. Um, so the thing that I really like about the way we've done snippet insertion in Cursorless is that you can use the same snippet definition both for wrapping and for insertion, okay? So let's take that same func snippet um, uh, and now use it to create a function. So first, let me give this function a name so the parse tree is happy. Q 
Camel, hello world. Poor funk, clap. Drowse. Okay, so now we're here sitting beneath this function, uh, and I want to insert a function. Scratcher. Drowse. Looks like I forgot to drowse Talon. <laughs> so let's uh, pick it back up and insert this function. Snip funk. Drow. So you can see um, now I was able to use that same one to insert a function. And it has the same tab stops, right? So here, because I wasn't wrapping something, it has left a little tab stop um, for the body. Um, so, you know, I can say camel some function next, next drows. And then now I can go into this body here, right? Um, there was a tab stop for arguments. I skipped over it because we're not using them. Um, so another cool aspect of the way that this snippet inter insertion works on this experimental branch is that you can provide the text for any, for a single one of the snippet holes, um, in a single breath. Okay. So let's see what that looks like today. I'm going to define a function and name it at the same time. Poor funk clap. Snip funk, my function. Drowse. So you can see it inserted, um, the function, uh, and a function, but then the phrase that came afterwards, it automatically formatted in camel case, um, and use it as the name. If we were in a Python file, it would have formatted it in snake case. Um, pop last, pop next twice, snip funk, my function drowse. So you can see there it used snake case. Um, so, uh, that's what it, ex what exists in an experimental branch. Um, so, okay, um, what needs to happen before we merge that branch? Um, and where else are we kind of going in slightly longer term? Um, so uh, one of the problems with the way snippets um, uh, exist today in cursorless is that the representation that we use on disk to represent a snippet, that is the way you as a user define a snippet, uh, is very cumbersome. Um, it's currently written in JSON. So um, let's take a look at what that uh, function snippet looks like. Um, and frankly, I think, you know, I defined a bunch of these, but, you know, I have a lot of patience <laughs> because I made the thing, right? Um, as a user, we don't necessarily expect you to, to fight with this syntax. So let's take a look at it. Pop sesh home, list doc function. Drops. Uh, sorry, I was in the wrong uh, in the wrong uh, session. Uh, okay, so this is my function declaration snippet, right? Um, so you can see um, uh, there's a lot of syntax here. It's all it's all in JSON, right? So JSON is um, very uh, a very a very well defined um, syntax, um, unambiguous, um, which is nice. But if you notice, if you look at the way the body of the snippet is defined. Um, you have to define it in these strings on multiple lines. You have to escape tabs. You have to escape quotes. Um, and there's just a, a lot here. Um, uh, so we'd like to move to a more compact syntax and also make it easier to write these snippets, okay? Um, so uh, I'm gonna give you a quick demo of um, one of the ways to make it easier to write these snippets as well as talk a bit about the um, the syntax that we're moving towards. Um, so let's start off with the syntax we're moving towards. Um, so there is currently a discussion open on the cursorless uh, VS Code repo. Um, hop in, I uh, would love your feedback um, before this stuff is finalized. Um, uh, so let's, let's take a look at that and I'll also leave a link below. Portal, tab next. Drowse. So this is my first experiment with this uh, uh, GitHub discussions, uh, pretty much. Um, and so we'll see how it works. Uh, but basically, we have an example of a snippet from today, and then a proposal for a new syntax. Um, so uh, this syntax is is born out of a discussion with a couple users who are really excited about snippets, um, um, who found this quite verbose, as did I <laughs> uh, when we first created it. So the idea, um, and again, this is all very much in flux, is to use um, the snippet itself will just be defined, um, first of all, just flat. Uh, so you, it's not nested in some structure the way it is today. You can see it's nested in some structure called body wrapped in strings. It just exists in free text here, right? Um, that's the first difference. So you don't need to like escape strings and all that craziness. The second difference, just looking at the body of the snippet itself, is we're moving to a, a syntax that's more like handlebars um, rather than this sort of dollar-based syntax. 
Um, I think it's a bit nicer for templating. Um, uh, we're thinking of using Nunjux, um, which is kind of like a handlebars flavored syntax, but has a lot of really cool stuff going on. Um, so uh, I, there's a link to it in this discussion if you want to take a look. Um, so that's that's one change. The second is instead of using JSON, we're leaning towards using Toml for these for the metadata preamble, um, and. It's an interesting language. I'm hesitant to introduce a new language into everyone's tool chain, um, but JSON is very verbose and YAML is a really painful language. Um, it's it's huge, it's too big. <laughs> um, and so it can be very ambiguous. We have some users who are very, very down on, on YAML and I, I guess I don't blame them. So um, we're looking at Toml, um, which uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, but for the simple stuff, it's fairly simple. And then basically um, when you do some nesting, right? So if we want to give information about each of the variables, right? So like, for example, the body, when you wrap, when I say like class wrap air, when I say wrap or scope types function, that means it's going to expand to the function, right? Um, uh, so um, not a super important detail, but so this is kind of the syntax we're, we're leaning towards, much more compact. Um, so please give us feedback on that. The second direction um, th uh, we have around making these things easier is actually automatically generating the snippets, um, which is, this exists on experimental branch. So I'm gonna show this off because I think it's kind of a fun one. Um, coder. Pop last. Take whale and harp. Drowse. Okay, so let's say um, I have this function here, right? And I wanna turn this function into a snippet and leave tab stops or holes for one for the name and one for this variable here, right? Um, so I can do that using this new command that's on my experimental branch, snip make func, drowse. And so basically that takes the target I referred to, which is the function, and that's gonna become the snippet. And anywhere I had a selection, see I have two selections here, those become holes, right? So let's give this thing a name, camel sum snippet, clap. Browse. And it just generated this snippet definition for me, right? Um, so it automatically escaped everything that it needed to, left me with these variables, and now I can give them names. Word name next. Snake condition variable. Disk. Drowse. And now I have a snippet. Um, so um, I can go and define a voice command um, uh, that allows me to insert the snippet. Um, voice adjust. Poor, word whatever, spam, camel, some snippet, disk, pop sesh, pop last, poor file clap, snip whatever, drowse. And there you go. Um, I've now inserted a templatized version of this and then there's a tab stop here and one here. Um, so it makes it much easier to write these snippets. Um, so that's kind of, uh, so, okay, I've said, where are we today in terms of what's shipping, right, is wrappers. Uh, where are we on an experimental branch, which is inserting these same snippets that you can use as wrappers, as well as another experimental branch where you can automatically generate um, this today very cumbersome syntax. Um, and then in the near term, we're going to be changing the syntax, probably even before we merge the, insert, the snippet insertion, because we don't want too many people to write uh, snippets using this older syntax. Um, and now let's take um, a little bit of time, maybe a minute to just talk about what is the big picture here, right? Where do snippets fit in? Um, so I have a couple of, if you check out this new modes of interaction um, uh, project, that's where a lot of the snippet stuff is. Um, and so open the issues, comment on them, etc. cetera. So um, basically the two directions are one, what we're calling stable snippets. Um, snippets in VS Code are, are very fragile um, in the sense that um, let's say I'm here uh, if I like click over here, the tab stops die, right? And I can no longer say next to go to the next one, which in cursorless is kind of a problem because you're going to jump around, right? Um, uh, and um, so what we want is basically to have what we call stable snippets where cursorless, dri cursorless drives the snippet interaction. And so it would show a decoration here for each of the holes. And if I go to a different file and go back, the snippet stays there. It could even persist on disk. I reopen the workspace and the snippets are still there. Kind of inspired by the way holes work in Agda. If you haven't checked that out, take a look. Um, it's linked in a couple different places on these snippet issues. Um, 
And then you can start to do cool things like I move to a different file. This thing's not even on screen. And I say, hey, add um, add uh, this statement. Move this statement to the body of the snippet that I'm in, right? And the snippet could be in a totally different file that I don't even see, right? So it enables really powerful ways um, of interacting with cursorless. You could potentially have a snippet where the holes are across several different files. And each hole, getting into the second thing I'm excited about, which is smarter snippet holes, each hole in the snippet can know how to transform the things that come in, right? I talk about the boilerplate to add a new cursorless hat color, right? And you can see, um, you know, I need to add it here and say the type, and then I need to add it um, over here and put this, right? And so the idea is you could have this big sort of multi-file snippet and I say, hey, add a new color green. And it would transform it in different ways and insert it in all these different positions. Um, so uh, hopefully that gives you a good picture of where we are today, where we're going to be tomorrow, and where we're going to go in the next, let's say, four to six months um, as we continue to build out Cursorless. Um, thanks so much for watching, um, and uh, happy coding. Record stop.